All right, we're on another cool project. We're at a sober living house. We're gonna help them out, do some some decorative floors, some some really durable floors for them in the laundry room and two of their bathrooms. And so I'll kind of, we'll kind of walk around and show you what we got going on. So first one is, this is gonna be the laundry room, wood subfloor. So it's gonna be a cool, cool process for you guys to see how we go over wood subfloors. Um, we're gonna be doing one of our flake systems in here. Reason is, is they look cool. And they're also extremely durable, especially like a laundry room, right? Gonna be getting wet, walking in here a lot. And then also the bathroom, same thing, gonna be getting wet, walking in there a bunch, um, multiple people living in these homes. And so they opted for our flake system. Could you do a, a metallic, a, a decorative, epoxy? You absolutely could. But again, we're gonna be doing flakes in the laundry room and then the two upstairs bathrooms. So what they did is they, they had some some rotted wood that they took out and replaced. You can see the new pieces of wood, right? We got a lot of gaps in here that we're gonna be filling. You'll have to see how we do that. So the plan is to get these floors grinded, get them as clean as we can. We're gonna, we're gonna patch all the seams. We're gonna be putting fiber tape on all the seams, uh, flood it, and then we'll wind up doing our flake system. So it's gonna be a cool process. So we'll go upstairs, I'll show you the other two bathrooms. This is again, laundry room. And they ripped the whole floor up, resheated it, which always makes it nice, right? So it's not all uneven. Everything's seamed up pretty tight. Not a lot of gaps. So this is the second, second room that we'll be doing. And we're gonna hop back over here. And this will be the other one. So this one, rotted wood, replace the wood here. Got some seams that we're gonna have to fill. First thing we're gonna do is prep all the wood and I think they're ready to start doing that. So next step in the process is fiber tape the seams. That's gonna add a lot more rigidity to these seams, even though the epoxy has really high tensile strength. It's just an extra precaution for the seams, and we like to do it fast. Notice how they're splitting the difference, right? The seams in the middle, fiber tapes on each side, and the back of this is sticky, so it'll stick to the wood. And then we don't overlap them at all, right? So they're cutting them flush, right? They're not overlapping, they'll just cut them, right? Butt them up to each other. And then once we get all the seams done, they've already vacuumed, grinded, right? Did all that stuff, screwed down any loose pieces of wood. Um, after that's done, we're gonna patch or paste the seams. When we're filling these seams, we really wanna push that down into those seams, right? We wanna make sure we get them nice and filled. And then we just come by and clean them up, right? Feathered edge. Cause again, we're gonna be putting epoxy right over this in about 20 minutes.
Patrick face is awesome because it gets hard, but it also has flexibility to it. So it works great for going over, over wood. Um, and so now we're gonna go over this stuff wet. So the biggest thing when we do that is we wanna use, you don't, we don't wanna roll it because if the roller hits, the Patrick face will kind of stipple it out, pull it up, make a bunch of peaks that we'll have to sand off. So we're just gonna dump the product out. We're gonna spread it out with our Ligari flat squeegee, get it as, as close to even as we can, and then just let it self level and do its thing. Um, that way we're not disturbing the patcher paste, but it's a cool, pretty cool process because we're able to we're able to put the patcher paste down and not have to wait a day for it to dry. And then we're also able to get the flood coat on the same day. We just have a bunch of old 1.5 gallons. I always say if you're doing flood coats or trying to level something out, use use your old resin, use, use a colored resin maybe that you don't use a lot of, just whatever you have that's the oldest. So I spread it out with the squeegee. I know I said not to, not to roll it. I'm not gonna roll the really thick edges that we filled, but there's enough resin out here where it shouldn't affect the patcher paste because it's kind of slicked off now. And this will just help me get a good even coverage everywhere. All right, so next day guys, what a cool process this is. So we did patcher, fiber tape seams, patcher paste the seams, and then we flood coated right over it right after we patch the paste. So we didn't even let the patch or paste dry or anything, right? We went over it wet and it turned out phenomenal. Now the thing, if you're doing a thinner coat and you're going over the patch or paste when it's wet, I wouldn't roll it because it'll, it'll hit that patch or paste and pull it. But since we had a nice flood coat, a thick coating over the patch or paste, the roller wasn't able to get into the patch or paste and start pulling it up and making a bunch of, of ridges right from the roller. So that's what we're doing now. So we're gonna, hit any spots, right? Any imperfections, fill any holes that might've got missed. Um, I mean, you guys saw this floor, right? We had massive gaps on these edges. Look how these turned out, right? Once we flake this, you're not gonna notice any of this. Turned out really good. We had this massive low spot here, right? We'll never even tell. We're gonna buzz this wood that's high here, flat. And then over here is where it sloped to the stairs. And we got a nice clean line. We put a new toe kick on for the this, the edge there looks nice and clean, so we'll tape that again. But yeah, this, this floor is gonna look awesome once trim's up, it's all finished. So before I get into mixing, I wanna talk about the primer, right? We didn't use primer on this, there's a few reasons why. Number one, I like to put epoxy directly over the wood so it can soak in it and absorb into the wood. If we primed it, that's kind of a, like a, a barrier blocker for the resin to soak into the wood. Primer works great, it'll soak in as well, but the resin will soak in a little bit deeper, it'll sit there longer. And so, to get away from having to prime, we just pigment our flood coat brown, right? We're doing our dark mocha flake system in here. Um, and so, we pigmented a brown color that's in, the, in that flake system. Now, if we were doing maybe a, a metallic epoxy, right, and we were gonna do coffee color metallics, we would do the brown. If we were doing a white floor, we would have pigmented this flood coat white. And so we can get away without priming. And also we're gonna get a better bond from that resin soaking into that wood, right? It's very, very porous. It's mixing time. So we just fix some imperfections, vacuum, clean the floor, right? And we're ready to go. We're gonna be putting it down. This first coat's gonna go down at 185 square foot a gallon. And then we're gonna throw our flakes into that. Come back tomorrow, scrape, clean the flakes, and then we're gonna put it down at 85 square foot a gallon over the flakes. So I'm gonna mix up a gallon and a half kit, and we're gonna be able to do this floor and those two, two upstairs bathrooms.
Okay, so next day guys, we're gonna be scraping the flakes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take metal scrapers, like this guy right here, put on a pole. We're gonna scrape both directions, right? That's gonna knock off any of those flakes that are sticking up. We're gonna get it all in a pile, pick the majority up, and then we'll blow it into a corner and vacuum the excess up. 